Ten years ago, uh, we had just, well, we had thought through what Freedom House was going to be, and ten years ago, we didn't know if it was going to work. <laughs> it was going to be big, and I was like, good, I want it to be big. And he's like, no, I mean, it's going to be big. Send the people. That was your word. We claimed that word for you. Lord, you would send the people with the mind to work. Freedom House, you don't get to keep things like here very long. So as much as it has actually probably taken me 10 years to really work through and overcome things, I am not the fearful person I used to be, that's for sure. Freedom House really does have a place of leadership in the city to be strategic and intentional about trans city transformation. And that that's what, what it takes to actually make a difference. Yeah, God shows up and the Holy Spirit is active and, and it, we, we do need leaders who will, who will help to bring some uh, direction and intentionality to all that and I, I think Free Months has a strong leadership role and it's showing that in, in very tangible ways. It was running as a bar called The Scene. Uh, walked past two uh, bouncers in the, in the door, turned right and I looked at the dance floor and I remember very clearly God, the, the presence of God, the tangible presence of God coming in. And, I'm, and I, I, I got thinking, I'm looking at a dance floor and the lights were going. And hardly, there weren't very many people in there, but I looked at it and went, well, that's very peculiar. And so I did that, walked around a bit more, met, talked to the owner, and went home. And I said to my wife, I said to Charles, here, here's the address. You should go and you should go check it out for yourself. So she got in the Jeep. And she drove, did the same thing, and passed the bouncers, turned right, looked at the dance floor, exactly the same thing happened to her. When we started, God said, worship, and spend a year worshiping before you went out and did anything. And it messed with my mind, and it was the very beginning of many different times where God would mess with my mind to reveal my own self and my own heart. And this last 10 years, while it's been about city transformation, been about the rest. I'm different because my relationship with God has deepened and I have a better understanding of who He is and the why is behind the things we do. And so I'm I'm a person 10 years later who knows less, I believe, but knows God more. Freedom House is going to be a ministry center where God raises up people in their destinies to fulfill the calling that He has for their life. It's a church, but in an instant it can be turned into... This is Freedom House, and we're pretty excited about it. Thanks a lot. Originally, we first built this place, and the, the laughs that we had, me, Brian, and Dave, and Sam were really kind of like the core building group. I mean, Dave did the best he could. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, there was a lot of late nights, like literally, like two in the morning conversations, and, you know, between me and Brian and Sam. And that was the times I enjoyed them. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I know some people. a beach party where yes I wore a skirt. It was a very long wrap around skirt. No I did not um, have pants on underneath it but I did have shorts on so I kept it family friendly. However um, we were doing a beach party we were going to do a great big huge game of beach volleyball down in uh, one of the other rooms so we brought in a truckload of sand and filled the entire place with sand which then filled the entire church with sand for about six months. We, we were inside uh, waiting for the barbecue to start and I was sitting there some girls had had taken this one girl from the street uh, on a tour of the building we were just standing there talking and I I just went up to greet this girl and she she kind of nodded but didn't really look at me that closely and I was just talking to the other girls and all of a sudden this girl <laughs> she leapt at me and bit my well my my chest my she bit me in the nipple
uh, some of my favorite memories are just watching the kids as they just pressed into God and, and began to get prophetic words and prophetic visions and um, words of encouragement for each other. And um, it was just the start of something absolutely amazing. I've just been so impressed with the, uh, the passionate pursuit that is in the worship team. is seeing people get free and seeing their lives uh, change and grow and uh, get stronger and better with God and just seeing the things that they thought they couldn't do and seeing them overcome them and just be uh, freer people whenever, you know, in whatever they do. You know, a lot of my preconceived notions and thoughts of God have been torn down, reconstructed. Um, I'm probably less sure of the details than ever, but I'm more sure than ever of His love for me. encountered grace like I've never seen anywhere and I, I don't know I've always been really hard on myself and so I expected that other people always view me the same way as like never never meeting the standard kind of thing and I just I remember like Chrissy especially times where I've sat and talked with her and just poured out my heart and fully expected her to be like, you suck. Like, that is the worst, you are a sinner. And her just be like, so what's the truth? And this is who I see you as. This is who I see um, God has called you to be and what he sees in you when he looks at you. And that has had the greatest impact on my freedom. So we started out a living room 10 years ago. There was a, 10 of us in a living room, and then we went from there to a bar, converted the bar to affordable housing. We went from there to a mall, and now we're standing in, in Harmony Square. And this is really for us. This is really where stuff happens. We love being in public. We do things like Frosty Fest. Annually, 15,000 people come to that. We do, we're living in city here. Thousands come here. We do baptism in the square where, where hundreds come, and the last couple of years, 100 people every year have been baptized. And this is really where we like to be, really consider this our church. I was just filled with God's love and I felt like I had to. I literally had to do it. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for this day. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Lord, we just pray like you taught us. Heavenly Father, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There were other people, so many other people that that prayed through for Brantford, for Brantford, for Freedom House. And they don't even know what they prayed for. They don't even know what they helped to birth. And I, I just, I think like someday in heaven they'll, they'll know. The church is taking the message outside the walls of the church. Yeah. And it's in, in the public square. And there's a generation out there that don't really understand or know, you know, there was a period of time when that was that was just the way it was, but that's been lost, and now to see that being restored and redeemed, where the message of the gospel, in particular the, the nativity, is taken back out into the public square, and people are embracing it. I think my favorite part of Freedom House would probably be the Flip and Fridays. It's where I kind of got to know, know a lot of people and know um, the downtown area, which is where we are, so I mean that's huge, and that's part of what Freedom House is, is, you know, ministering to the downtown people and the homeless and the people that don't have the things that we have and being able to give stuff to them and do things with them and not have them not be afraid of who we are. Two years ago, I was intentionally, when I got up to do my speech, I was like, hey, thanks for coming, we love serving the city, and I went back to the line where all the dignitaries were, and then the mayor, Chris Real, stood up and started to talk about how great Freedom House was and, and how we do this to show God's love in a practical way. And he made the comment that this event, CrossFest two years ago, was a watershed moment for the downtown, how the downtown came alive again. And for us, that's that's such a huge win because that's what we want to do. Um, I've just learned to hear the voice of God and I've learned to submit my tasks and my to-do list to God. and. He's teaching me over and over and over again about what it actually means to keep in step with the Spirit. And I had a plan 10 years ago, and now my plan is to follow God. The fruit of it is 
friendship. The real, true friendship that is there and I have never experienced it before in, in this way. You know, when we started this, I had no idea that uh, such a high percentage of my time doing Ministry of Freedom House would be as Captain Kindness, but this Kindness Project thing has been beyond our wildest dreams and to be able to talk to the city about how a city can be changed by good into good. I've said that a million times and I'm actually starting to believe it because we're seeing it happen. So how does it get much better than that? It goes outside of the walls and it's it's touching community. It's putting putting something behind the words that we all talk about. And um, we personally want to be involved with something that is doing that. It's reaching beyond just what happens on a Sunday or a Tuesday night. As you've been, as you've been thinking about 10 years, what have, what, have your, what have your thoughts gone to words? 10 years? <laughs> I've been thinking 10 years is a decade and that was a long time. It seems both extremely long and very short at the same time. And as I project another decade, I go, holy snake, that'll make me 60. That should not happen. So we'll believe the Lord Jesus will come back prior to that.